Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, I'm growing with you guys. My community, Inspired by Dreams Shop, is the place to go. Okay, today's video, this is very important as far as your mental health and as far as you know your income, your financial um, stability. We're talking about corporate jobs that don't care anything about their workers. You guys let me know down below if you're going through this, you know, just a hectic job. Let me know down below and I'll get back to you in the comments. Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Reasons why I hate corporate America. Here is some of the bullshit that you as an employee living in the US has to deal with. Vacation time is an absolute joke. With only 10 vacation days and zero paid leave days, the US has earned its title as the no vacation nation. This is all from a Business Insider article that I found from online. This lack of paid leave has a significant negative impact on work-life balance. It causes burnout, stress, depression, mental health issues. Work-life balance is not a thing here. 50% of Americans don't use their vacation time and if you don't use it you lose it usually you only have a certain amount of time that you're allowed to carry over into the next year a lot of US employees don't take their vacation time and here's some reasons why time restriction employers will have blackout periods where you're not allowed to request at all or they'll just straight up deny you if you can't request that time period off workload management some people will refuse to go on vacation because of the stress that it will cause before or even after the vacation, especially after. Company culture. This one is kind of hidden, but it's so real. An unspoken expectation or pressure to not take time off, leading employees to feel guilty or even hesitate using their vacation days. When I was in Brazil, I told my family that I only had five days of vacation time to take off per year, and they were absolutely shocked. My sister told me that the statutory pay is 30 paid vacation days and 13 holidays, usually one holiday per month. It's shit like this that has been added to my list as to why I quit my corporate job and why I will never go back. I decided that I'm going to work for myself, by myself, and live on my own terms. I'm gonna make this happen with digital and affiliate marketing. Make sure you follow my page so you can follow my journey. Also comment down below about what your thoughts are on vacation time. Do you agree? Do you disagree? 2024 is gonna be different for us. We're living life on our own terms. I hope you have an amazing day. Guys, your CEO and your company does not care about you. I don't care if the culture page says we're empathetic and we care about you and we want you to bring your true self to work. It is not true. By now, you guys have probably seen that video of that employee that got let go. It went absolutely viral. Well, this is from the company page of that company and it's the culture page of a company called Cloudfare. And look what it says. It says, we want to create a culture in a workplace where employees feel comfortable and empowered to bring their genuine selves to work. I don't know if you guys saw that video, but that's not how I would describe what I saw on screen. It also says that we invest and support empathetic, curious, and mission-minded people. I did not hear that from the HR rep and I did not hear that from their employees. You need to understand that when companies are recruiting you in and they're trying to hire you, they will tell you what a great environment their workplace is, that they've got a great culture. But you only really find out what it's like three months, six months into working at the company or you get laid off. Guys, do not be fooled by this corporate culture mumbo jumbo. It's just not the truth. The truth is nobody cares about you as much as you care about you. TikTok, I do not want to work in corporate America anymore. Like, I just want to go get a little retail job that I don't care about and just have enough money to pay the bills and do what I want. Like, I don't need to climb the ladder. Like, working in corporate is not it. I've worked for four different major banks in different departments and I just don't like, I just don't like it. Like, when I worked at Capital One, I liked the people, but I didn't like the work. Like, I just... People think, I like, we're always taught, you know, go to college, you get a job in your field, get a good corporate job with benefits, good pay, whoop de whoop de whoop But the stress, like, waking up and dreading going to work 
but you feel like you have to because it's a good job it's a good pay like i just don't want to deal with it anymore i had less stress working front desk at the courtyard marriott okay getting cussed out by people it was less stress like working in corporate america it's just a bunch of people who think that they're dookie don't stink and it's just like high school and you're they want you to care so much about the job like i just don't want to work in corporate america anymore and it's just like i don't it's like i feel like you're looked down upon like if i were to leave this type of job and like go work you know a job that's not you know this you know advanced it would be like people would look at me like you have a college degree and that's what you're gonna do with it that's beneath you like i don't know but i don't know but i do know that this ain't gonna work and i just I, i'm tired of going to work and not liking it every day i'm starting to realize that these jobs don't care about you they don't care about you they just want you to come to work on time and it don't even matter if you're sick it don't matter if you got covid it don't matter if you got the flu it don't matter if you got the stomach bug it don't matter if somebody passed away in your family it don't even matter if your kids are sick i really feel like lately jobs nowadays they don't care about you they don't care about your well-being they don't care about your health they just want you at work on time that's it period jobs are really good at making you feel bad because you called out sick because you're not feeling well they make you feel bad about that they give you options to where if you don't come to work it's an occurrence meaning you're in trouble if you don't show up which is why i have this mask on by the way because i'm just recovering but i'm still at work jobs also make you feel like you have to choose between your family yourself your health and then they make you feel like you have to choose and it's coming to a point in my life right now where i'm just tired of working i'm tired i'm mentally tired i'm physically tired i'm tired of coming to work picking up everybody else's slack like i'm just tired i really need to invest and start my own business become my own boss i'm just really sick and tired of having to choose between my family and work i'm tired of having to choose between my health and work it really should be against the law for managers to make you come to work knowing that you're sick or either recovering from being sick and it shouldn't be a choice let's talk about why i hated working in corporate america here's my disclaimer if you're thinking about working in corporate america or you're currently working in corporate america i'm not trying to discourage you these are just the four things that i personally hated about working in corporate america number one is the high school vibes i remember the first day of working in corporate america and i sat down in my cubicle and i was like man this feels a lot like the first day of high school and then over time you begin to discover it's kind of set up like high school you got the classmates which are your co-workers you got the teacher which is your team lead and depending on who they are you love them or hate them then you have an assistant team lead which is kind of like the substitute teacher or the teacher's assistant then you have the director which is kind of like the principal of the floor you get my point i absolutely hate the high school vibe number two i hated the fakeness of corporate what i mean by that is you'll have people who smile on your face and then talk crap about you behind your back or in the break room then you'll have people that you think is your friend or be a long-term friend but they're kind of actually using you as a coping mechanism to make it through the day number three is the micromanagement when you first start working in corporate, you may feel like, okay, these people really got my back. But then once you finish OJT on the job training, you are out there to burn. Don't get me wrong, you do have some managers who are really nice and really supportive. But the longer you work in corporate, the more they are expecting you to just do your job. But if you're at the point where you find yourself asking a lot of questions or just being average, you better believe that manager is going to start emailing you and CCing you with other leaders and things of that nature. And that's the thing. I wonder why managers love to CC other leaders. To me, that is such a bullying tactic. And number four, the lack of value. What I mean by that is you're like a small fish in a big pond. And sometimes you can feel like you're just a number. I really hated that part because I like to feel like I'm making an impact and I'm accomplishing some things. Okay. Here it is in a nutshell why people get frustrated and burnt out in corporate America. Um, I am a product manager and I'm constantly told that my responsibility is to plan out the future of the product. What are the big enhancements 
that I see for it. How can it be a revenue generator? Right now my product is not a SaaS product and somehow uh, upgrading it, uplifting it, or like replacing it with a SaaS product so it can be a revenue generator is a hot topic right now. Um, but also, does it need to be sunsetted? You know, end of life. Every piece of software has a life cycle that comes to an end. And so I just came out of a meeting um, where I was told that the overall strategy of reporting for uh, my department is already being talked through. Um, those conversations are already happening and they're making decisions for my product, basically. So not only have I been wasting my time and really more so my mental energy in trying to think through how this is going to work, what am I missing, right? I was starting to work on a paper that showed basically the Venn diagram of what mine has, what I thought the future was going to be, and then, you know, where everything overlaps. And I was using, I had someone else help me as well. So now I've wasted my time. I've wasted that person's time. And it's like someone else is doing my job for me, but not in a good way, if that makes sense. And I have been very frustrated in my job for a long time. And when I'm looking at other roles and job descriptions, we know with that same title, they're looking for this experience that I was trying to make for myself. I was trying to give myself this opportunity. So when I'm going to interviews, when I'm on my resume, I can say, oh yeah, I have done ABC, XYZ, taken a product from zero to one, whatever it is. And now it just feels like it's been taken away from me. So in case you guys needed your daily reminder, if you were to die tomorrow, your job wouldn't care. So the company that I work for, um, we had one of our managers that had quit maybe like a week ago. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away. Um, and um, needless to say that nobody told anybody that this manager had passed away. Now, regardless of the fact that she had just quit, um, she had been with the company for multiple years and all of our higher up managers knew this manager had spent over two years at the current location that I work at and nobody here knew that unfortunately she passed away. So yeah, the sad part unfortunately is that your job won't ever, ever care about you. Past, present, future. Uh, you are just a number to them. So just remember that when you go to work today. Hey guys, I just want to come and talk about these jobs. And let me just say this, take that time off. Use your PTO time. Don't miss your baby first birthday or first holiday because you at work, even though you took off in advance. Because as much as hard work and time you put into these jobs, they will still replace you. Because if there's a will, there's a way. God will bless you with a better job. Matter of fact, a better job with better pay. So I'm saying take them sick days, take your PTO time, take your mental days, take your off days because the job is replaceable. Your life and kids and mental health is not. It's no secret that last week took me out, okay? Let's be real. But it really triggered like a, a think piece, if you will, about corporate America. And if you're sick of me talking about corporate America, just imagine how sick I am living it, okay? After much pontification, I have come to the conclusion that I am not a corporate girly. Also, my value is not in my job title, and it's just a means to an end. I know we all have to work to like make money, but I don't know why we're pretending like we're not working to make money. And, and my end goal is not climbing the corporate ladder. I have a different career plan, if you will, in mind. And even speaking of career plans, I feel like those look different than how they did years ago, but that's that's a think piece for another video. Maybe one day on here I will share my end goal, but just know that corporate America is not. And like last week, the way that I just was spiraling, it it almost in a way was for my benefit. It kind of woke me up. It was like, okay, girl, you this is not what you want to do. You don't need a mentor to like help you navigate this space because it's not a space that you want to be in for years and years to come. And even though that feels or sounds like a tiny mind shift, I feel so much better. 
going into this week so much better. And I'm sure I'm gonna deal with like the same BS, but with that mind shift and some prayer because I am just so much more sure of myself and where I'm going and I'm at peace with that. So why was I being told to get over my husband's death after four months by my employer? Not because I wasn't coming to work, not because I wasn't turning in my deliverables, but because I was no longer working 12 hour shifts. I was no longer available to them the way that they had become accustomed to me being available. And I was unavailable. I was unable to be the happy person that they had become accustomed to because I was grieving, but they did not leave a space for that. In fact, when my employee that they hired made a mistake that cost the company $75,000, who do you think they wrote up for that? You guessed it, it was me. They wrote me up because it was my department and they said I should have caught the mistake. However, my CFO was the one who did the review that month because he put me on audit stuff. And when I told him that he should get the write up because it's his department, if we're going by the logic that they're writing me up for, it was just silence. Fast forward, cause I had to get the hell up out of that company. I got recruited by another company that I did three interviews with. On the third interview, they had given me the job offer already and I was coming back to renegotiate. When they asked me what my concern was about accepting the role, I told them stability and I needed to make sure being a newly widow with three kids that I would have the stability and longevity there to support and provide for my family. They assured me that the company was in great shape. They had just signed a 10 year contract with one of their largest customers, et cetera, et cetera. I get in to this company and find out that what they told me was not true. So I went into this letting you guys know that the only reason why I was looking for a job was for stability for my family because I was now on a one person income. You guys still did not care about that and recruited me anyway. So here we are 17 months later and I got laid off due to the current state of the company, which was coming. I saw it from the moment I got there. So what did I do? Instead of quitting, I made sure that my entire team was cross-trained. I made sure that they had all of their processes video documented and that everyone could back up everyone. I prepared my team for my termination. I did that because I cared about my team and I made a commitment to the company and I honored that. I wish I would have gotten some of the same courtesy and respect back, but we know how that goes. Okay, there's a lot that could be said about this, this whole structure, the, the way jobs and corporate and big businesses treating the little people. And um, as you guys know, from if you've been watching my videos from, from a while now, um, I like to be original, especially with my quotes and how I feel and my energy that I, I give to you guys. So from this, the best thing I can take from it, never give up your peace of mind for a piece of change because your mental health is the real wealth. You guys let me know in the comments down below how do you feel on it and um, is it a force for you to work a corporate job or can you take the leap or do you want to take the leap but you can't and let me know why. Leave your comments down below. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.